Regular meeting number 52 will now come to order. Please stand for the playing of the national anthem. This evening, Council is pleased uh, to have Monsignor Cody back to pray with us. Good Thank evening, you, Mr. Monsignor. President. It's a pleasure and a privilege to be here. Let us pray. O oh, good and merciful and provident God, as the members of Columbus City Council meet in session this evening, we ask for your grace and blessing on them as they conduct the business of our city. As our nation and city move toward election day next week, we ask your guidance to help our citizens to make good choices in deciding our community leaders and any issues that are included on the ballot. As the colder weather creeps upon us, we remember in prayer those of our brothers and sisters who are homeless, jobless, or in any way deprived of those things that make our lives more comfortable and bearable as winter approaches. As our families prepare to celebrate Thanksgiving this month, make us thankful for those people and those businesses and utilities that exist to help all of us to have the necessities of life, to ensure the flourishing of all of our citizens, especially the poor and the marginalized. Give our members of council the gifts of wisdom and understanding, as well as courage and the knowledge necessary to discern and assure the needs of our citizens and to answer them. In all things, Lord God, we look to you to guide and sustain us. Bless the work of our hands. We ask you humbly. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Monsignor. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Any person who takes any actions to obstruct or interfere with the conduct of tonight's meeting may be charged with disturbing a lawful meeting. Pursuant to Columbus City Code 2317.12, any person who enters those areas of city council chambers reserved for city officials or invited guests may be charged with criminal trespass pursuant to Columbus City Code 2311.21. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. This week's communications received by the city's clerk's office are listed on the agenda and will be published in the city bulletin. Are there any other communications? Uh, not this time. Are there uh, any resolutions by members of council? Sorry, Councilmember Brown. I do not have a resolution, but I do have a presentation. Um, if the city leaders program and program director Sherry Lynn Wynn could please come forward. I would uh, welcome to city council chambers. The City Leaders Program develops the city's leaders of tomorrow by providing an orientation and overview of the city of Columbus through hands-on learning opportunities and mentoring by current city leadership. I had the opportunity to say hello to each of these students before the council meeting tonight. It is always such a pleasure to experience the enthusiasm that our students have for our city and their schools and community and the program itself. Director Wynn, could you kick us off, please, by saying a few words about city leaders? I certainly will. Thank you so much. To Council President Harden, to Council Member Pro Tem, and Chairperson Reckon Parks, 
uh, Elizabeth Brown and to members of council. Thank you once again. This makes my eighth time here. So that says that we're doing something successful with this city leaders program. This is the eighth class of city leaders. We also have an alumni here with us and they'll introduce themselves. Uh, we're very happy for the Recreation and Parks Department leadership that has provided the opportunity for us to thrive and also for you members of council. These youth that you see in front of you have or maintain, I'm sorry, maintain, not just have, a 3.0 or better grade point average, some of which have 4.0 and better. So these are some of your better students. They're middle schoolers, grades six through eight. 10 schools are represented with our 14 city leaders that we have this year. We start with a boot camp in August and we visit all around the city of Columbus to places, to museums, to social service entities like pilot dogs, to our city golf courses and hospitals, et cetera. Our academy sessions from September to May operate on the Best in You program, which is a self-inflection. Uh, we've had 124 city leaders pass through the program. And this year, we had three city leaders, two alumni and one current, that were awarded the mayor's 20 under 20. So I'm really excited about that. Our city leaders have gone on to become entrepreneurs, enlist in the military, law schools, colleges with full rides. And we're just excited for the funding that you provide that provides our staffing and our admissions to various places and definitely our food. So I think council member, you wanted them to introduce themselves? Yes, if um, each of the students, I know you each have a nice firm handshake because we tried it out um, before the, the meeting. So if you would also use your, your best public speaking voices and attitude and each come to the microphone, say your name and what school you attend. Hello, I am Amir Ali Osman. I am, I attend uh, Hamilton Middle School and I'm in seventh grade. Hi, I'm Gideon Fleming. I attend Buckeye Middle School and I am this, in the seventh grade. My name is Nathaniel Lewis. I attend Indian Nolan Formal K-3 and I am in the eighth grade. My name is Lucia Murphy. I'm in the seventh grade at the Columbus Gifted Academy. My name is Evo Sullivan, and I go to also go to the Columbus Gifted Academy, and I'm in eighth grade. My name is Jail Cabrera Ainsley. I go to OHVA Ohio Virtual Academy and OCU Ohio Christian University. I am in the seventh grade. And this is one of our 20 under 20, Jail. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hello, my name is Jill Hainsley. I attend Ohio Virtual Academy, and I'm in the ninth grade. He's a <laughs> Hello, my name is Jawan Warren, and I attend Groveport Middle School North, and I'm in the sixth grade. Mm -hmm. Hello, my name is Jaden Vance. I attend Berwick Alternative K-8, and I'm in the sixth grade. Hello, my name is Liam Wedig. I go to Indianola Informal, and I'm in the eighth grade. Fantastic. I know that a part of the program is working on public speaking, so you all did a great job. Mm -hmm. um, programs like City Leaders are great ways for you to learn about civic engagement. You get to experience firsthand the importance of pride in your city, but more importantly, what it means to take an active role in leadership and in our collective future. So welcome to City Council Chambers. I hope you have enjoyed the experience. Before we say farewell, I want to give my colleagues an opportunity to say something if they'd like. Great. Well, thank you. Um, I, I, would, I would put money on the fact that maybe one of you will be behind these desks one day. Um, so enjoy the rest of your Monday, and I think you're going to get a quick City Hall tour. Thanks again. <laughs> thank you. Councilmember Mitch Brown. All right. Councilmember Dorn. Thank you, President Harden. Uh, I have one resolution that's actually on consent this evening, but we were able to have some folks come down tonight. Uh, so at this time, I'd like to invite the folks from the Franklin and Historical Society to come to the podium. Um, a couple weeks ago, I had the pleasure of attending their celebration. 
um, honoring the, the placement of a historical marker at the Harrison House in Franklinson. Um, there is an immense amount of history wrapped up in this house uh, and certainly wrapped up in this area of Columbus. And certainly uh, I enjoyed the dramatic historical retelling of a lot of the things that happened in that part of the city in the, uh, in the, in the 18th century. Um, so certainly want to invite those folks forward. Mm-hmm. And certainly I uh, think that Sandy and uh, Mr. Stokes can probably fill us in a little bit about um, the history of uh, the, the Harrison House and the exciting events that took place a few weeks ago. Go ahead. Okay. First of all, this is a president of our association, Sandy. And uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you, Councilman Dorn, for bringing forth this resolution. Mr. President, and you and the council members for accepting the resolution. And also to say that uh, I was pleased to read that one of the council members is a former resident of the Franklinton area also. And I welcome you uh, to our neighborhood and hope to see you frequently. Uh, in addition to that, the effort put forth by our uh, Franklinton Historical Society over the years has brought about the preservation of this. And I got involved, quite frankly, several years ago with Councilwoman Fran Ryan in saving that. And I think that you're being a little remiss tonight and not recognizing what labor did for us back then to save the Harrison House, the effort put forth in the renovation and, and uh, preserving that site. Uh, with, their, with their effort, we were very successful. So with that, I will leave it to, uh, to our president to address the historical aspect briefly of the Franklinton Historical Society, why it's so important and why it's such a great asset. And it's complemented by one of the first post offices in the United States that resides there on Gift Street, just about a block and a half from our site. And uh, then, of course, I've been a longtime resident of the area and to attend church at Holy Family, one of the oldest parishes in, in Franklin County. And uh, so that's what drew me in recent years to get involved with the Historical Society to try and preserve more of the sites in Franklinton. So, Sandy, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, sir. This is the first resolution that our country ever made the 4th of July, 1776, and it was signed by Benjamin Harrison, William Henry Harrison's father. Our resolution from the Historical Society, which we, uh, I think, put it together about 30 years ago by our former president. I'm going to just read it to you. It's not much. The purpose of the Franklinton Historical Society shall be to encourage the preservation and restoration of historical structures, collect, preserve, and display memorabilia and historical items, educate, share information, and promote interest in Franklinton history, encourage community involvement, both residential and business, cooperate with other organizations interested in Franklinton, nurture a sense of pride in Franklinton area. That's our resolution. And this one, this one is your resolution, and you can't believe what this means to us. This is a big honor for us. We will cherish it forever. We will display it wherever we can. And we have some little gifts for you, some magnets and calendars from the Franklinton Historical Society, which uh, I'll let somebody pass them out. Will you take care of that? Okay, thank you. So everybody can get a calendar and remember Franklinton. And there's a little magnet to put on your refrigerator so you'll never forget the day that this happened. This was just on the 19th of October. So thank you, and we very much appreciate your recognizing us. Thank you. Thank you, thank you all for coming thank down. I appreciate you sharing more about the, the history of the house and why it matters to Franklinton and Columbus. Appreciate it.
Uh, the stem move for adoption. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Adopt it. Congratulations. That's all I have this evening, President Harden. Thank you, Councilmember. Councilmember Favor. Councilmember Remy. Thank you so much, Council President Harden. Tonight, I had, would like to invite Chad Whittington and LP DeBella to this podium as I introduce ordinance number 299X 2019 to recognize and celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Columbus Association for the Performing Arts in the city of Columbus, also known as CABA. In 1969, the Columbus Association for the Performing Arts was formed to save downtown's historic Ohio theater from demolition by leading and generating community-based fundraising and restoration efforts. CAPA has gone on to steward nine additional Central Ohio entertainment venues, including the historic Southern Theater, Palace Theater, Lincoln Theater, and Drexel Theater, thereby preserving Columbus's history for countless future generations to enjoy. Supporting the Columbus arts community, CAPA has provided specialized back office services to seven local arts and culture organizations, allowing each organization to better focus on producing innovative, quality entertainment for Central Ohio audiences. CAPA has partnered nationally with Broadway Across America to bring the hottest productions and brightest starts of Broadway home to Columbus. CAPA presents national and international artistic programming of the highest quality on its stages, educating diverse local audiences and featuring renowned artists of all cultures. CAPA produces Festival Latino, a free annual community celebration of Latin American culture that has become the largest Hispanic event in Ohio in the CAPA Summer Movie Series, the longest running classic film series in America. CAPA provides transformative performing arts experiences, education, and outreach to all ages in the Central Ohio community and beyond through its education series, master classes, talkback events, the CAPA Marquee Awards for high school musical theater students, and more. CAPA has been a cultural and economic asset in Columbus for five decades, serving hundreds of thousands of patrons each year and currently generating in excess of $94 million in local economic impact. Columbus City Council is thankful for the impactful work of CAPA as it is actively making Columbus a national destination for living, breathing, art. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the this Council of the City of Columbus that this council does hereby recognize and celebrate the Columbus Association for Performing Arts in their 50th anniversary in the City of Columbus. Chad, Elfie, the floor is yours. All right. Thank you, Council Member Remy and all of Council. Uh, we appreciate that you've recognized CAPA's 50th anniversary. Though I'll say after listening to all that, I'm tired and listening to everything <laughs> we've got to do. Good thing we've got a lot of great staff to help us out. As we've celebrated our 50th anniversary, I've talked a lot about the fact that CAPA was formed by just four individuals, but almost overnight, it became the entire community to support CAPA. And that's what it takes to form great arts organizations. The City of Columbus has been a partner all 50 of those years, and so I thank you for that, your continual support, and your partnership. We wouldn't be what we are today without a great partner like the City of Columbus. I'm especially proud of a few events we did this year, and I'd just like to mention those, and the reason I'm proud of these is because these are either low-cost or no-cost events. We felt it was really important as we celebrated our history to share it with everyone in our community, to make our buildings accessible and our programs welcome for everyone that lives here. In the spring, we held a community day at the Lincoln Theater. It's hard to believe that we've completed our 10th season already since the reopening of the Lincoln. So many great events that have taken place there. We held an organ concert to celebrate the Morton Organ, one of the few organs in the country that is in its original home. Over the summer, we held open house tours at our downtown theaters, the Ohio, the Palace, and the Southern, where we welcomed almost 1,500 members of the community to stand on our stages and experience the view that we do of our beautiful historic theaters. We did a spook out movie, Hocus Pocus, just a few weeks ago at the uh, Ohio Theater, where again, we listened to the organ and we had folks dress up in their favorite costume. 
We're looking forward to an event November 10th at the Lincoln, Sunjata, which is the original story of the Lion King from West Africa. So we're holding that at the Lincoln, but also taking it out into the community to reach folks that, that might not have been at our theaters before. We're excited about that. Just as a key piece of this year has been welcoming our community and making our theaters accessible, that's a key piece of our future as well. I look forward to our continued work to make sure that our theaters are a welcome place for everyone. I'm honored to represent Kappa as it celebrates 50 years, and I'm excited to our bright future, not just for Kappa, but for the arts community. It's a great time to be in Columbus and a great time to be a part of the arts community here. And again, I just want to thank you for your support in making that happen. Thank you. You're not going to say anything? No. It's just I, an honor to be here. Well, it's, it, the, the buildings that you help transform into community arts you know, venues um, are, are just amazing. I mean, you just go down to the Ohio Theater and look around down there at the beauty. Um, it's quite incredible. Got to see Hamilton earlier this year, which was obviously an incredible performance, but also the palace. I mean, getting the opportunity to, to see the work that you've done to renovate that and bring the splendor back to that, um, that facility is, is really special. So thank you for all that you do, and we look forward to another 50 years. That's for certain. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues this evening? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Adopted. Thank you. That's all I have this evening. Thanks. Thank you. Councilmember Tyson. Oh, Are there any comments by elected officials? I see Judge is here. Judge Barrows, welcome to Council. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Yes. Are there other, any other uh, or any requests by members of Council for the removal of ordinance or resolution from the consent portion of the agenda? Seeing none, may we now have a motion to waive reading of the title of the third day legislation? Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Thank you. Uh, will the clerk now read into the record the ordinance numbers of 30-day legislation on tonight's agenda? Finance Committee Ordinances 2450, 2451, 2513, 2548, and 2599. Dash 2019 Recreation and Parks Committee Ordinances 2544, 2619, and 2621. Dash 2019 Public Utilities Committee Ordinances 2211, 2214, 2383, 2400, 2521, 2556. 2566, 2581, 2605, 2631, 2666, 2668, 2682, 2688, and 2726 2019. Technology Committee Ordinance 2196 2019. Public Service and Transportation Committee Ordinances 2578 and 2597 2019. Administration <coughs> Committee Ordinances 2678, 2741. Dash 2019 Rules and Reference Committee Ordinance 2642 2019 Zoning Committee Ordinances 2471 2700 2742 2748 2765 2019 Seeing no speakers on the first reading portion of the agenda, the following ordinance appear on our agenda as consent actions. Will the clerk now read those ordinances into the record? Resolutions of Expression 293X, 295, 297, and 298X. 2019 Finance Committee Ordinances 2516, 2541, 2558, 2565, 2576, 2675, 2679, 2681, 2685, and 2703 2019 Recreation and Parks Committee Ordinances 2610, 2612, 2615, 2616, 2617, and 2620 2019 Public Safety Committee Ordinances 2538, 2557, 2652 2019, Veterans and Senior Affairs Ordinance 2823 2019, Public Utilities Resolution 274X 2019, and Ordinances 2412, 2569, 2650, 2654 2019, Neighborhoods Committee Ordinance 2274 2019, Technology Committee Ordinances 2643 and 2763-2019, Public Service and Transportation Committee Resolution 239X-2019, Ordinances 2456, 2460, 2462, 
2562, 2568, 2593, 2657, 2674, and 2683 2019. Housing Committee Ordinances 2644, 2645, 2686, 2721, 2722, and 2786-2019. Criminal Justice and Judiciary Committee Ordinances 2503, 2589, 2669, 2701 2019. Administration Committee Ordinance 2661 2019. Health and Human Services Committee Ordinances 2627, 2628, 2671 2019 and appointments from the mayor's office numbered A0183, 184, 185, 186, and 187-2019. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We have one speaker on the consent portion of the agenda. Mr. Nathaniel Wilkins is speaking uh, uh, on ordinance 2644 in the housing committee. Mr. Wilkins, welcome back to council. 1612 Arlington Avenue, Mr. Lathan George Wilkins. Um, I'm speaking in against of 2644 2019. Uh, the address is located at 3006 Atwood Terrace in North Linden area. I'm against it for six reasons why is we 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 talk and talk about these properties that sit idolized and empty for decades and time after time a year. And again, I put it through the Franklin County Auditor's website once again. House was listed for $30,000 two times. Central Ohio Community Investment took this over and went to the city. State of forfeiture, uh, state, of, state, of, state of Ohio forfeiture foreclosure had took this property and has not had it up for sale. Uh, Central Higher Community Investment took this over in 2000, I believe in 17, as zero. Then the city stepped in and took it over. Now, I understand that it was listed here three times for $30,000. And I guess there was a house on it back in 2014, a uh, three of 14, 2000 and, uh, 2014 had sit like this. When a house that sits like this, why does not an increase of thirty to fifteen thousand dollars? As I look on the Franklin County Auditor's website, in this particular neighborhood, as North Linden, we are losing a lot of property, and today it still sits as a vacant land. Why are we continually to demo property in the area when it could can it be rehabbed? You know, this is not where we ain't getting notified or the residents or North Linden what can be done with certain pieces of property in the area. As I, as I look, we have retail, car lots, whatever. You know, we, we don't just don't want to see any more empty lots. We want to see residents to get involved to take back their community. Because what's happening that I see with my eyes here is we are losing a lot of history. A lot of history that can be idolized and repurposed for these people that's getting off the street or you as utilized for the troubled youth, bringing job opportunities and trades back into this community. And that's what I don't see. I see a lot of boarded up properties that sit idolized year after year after year. And the city's plan to this is really to demo and use it for another purpose. No, why not just giving these homes a second chance? It's like people getting out of prison or recovering addicts to giving them a place to stay. You know, this is what I don't see, but I see a lot of property that's boarded up and rotted away. So thank you for your time. I'd like to have more clarification. How long did this property have sit in the land bank? Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Wilkins. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. Thank you. Uh, Director, can we follow up on the specifics of this uh, partial in the, in the land bank for Mr. Wilkins? Mr. Wilkins, um, like we said, I think last week, I, I do want to have a, a more comprehensive conversation around our um, uh, uh, housing, um, our, our land bank use property. I think you have raised this topic uh, with us uh, every week, and I, I do think it's time to have just a, a, a touch base um, hearing so that we can uh, use some of the questions that you've raised to educate folks on how, how our land bank um, properties come about. So I'll work with uh, Chair, uh, Chair Favor 
uh, to, to pull that together uh, in the near future. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments on the, um, uh, on the consent portion of the agenda? Seeing them, may we now have a motion for approval of these items designated as consent? Please call the roll by, uh, please call the roll by voice. Nope. But our, our, please call the roll. Brown, okay. Brown, Doran's favor, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Con uh, consent actions uh, items are passed. We will now proceed with the second reading of 30-day uh, legislation. Uh, the first committee to come before council is finance. That committee is chaired by President Pro Tem Elizabeth Brown. Council member, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Hardin. Tonight in finance, we have ordinance 2560-2019 to amend the 2019 capital improvement budget to authorize the director of finance and management to enter into a contract on behalf of the office of construction management with the Ryder Company Incorporated for elevator modernization in City Hall to authorize the transfer of $1,625,000 within the construction management capital improvement fund to authorize the expenditure of $1,625,000 from the Construction Management Capital Improvement Fund and to declare an emergency. There are three elevators that service City Hall that were last renovated 10 years ago and are in need of replacement. This work will ensure the elevators are up to current safety codes. As a local company, the Writer Company Incorporated was given the opportunity to match the lowest responsive bid through City Code Section 329.212 and was selected for the project. Emergency action is being considered so that renovations can begin as quickly as possible to ensure that elevators remain compliant with safety codes. Are there any questions from colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, <coughs> Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Passed. Next, we have Ordinance 2638-2019 to authorize the Finance and Management Director to renew a contract with Byers Minton and Associates, LLC, for a consulting services contract related to state government relations, to waive competitive bidding provisions of Columbus City Code Chapter 329, to authorize the transfer of $60,000 between divisions within the general fund, to authorize the expenditure of $60,000 from the general fund, and to declare an emergency. Byers Minton and Associates will continue to provide services for the city that include assisting staff in developing a comprehensive policy agenda for state government. The goal is to continue advancing the interests of the city by monitoring all legislation and executive agency decisions at the state level that impact our city of Columbus. Byers Minton will assist the city in strengthening working relationships with statewide officials and legislative leadership and further build relationships with local coalitions, business organizations, regional partnerships, and chambers of commerce. Competitive bidding provisions are being waived in recognition of the extensive institutional knowledge, experience, and track record Byers Minton have in providing these services. Emergency action is being considered so that the contract can be renewed as quickly as possible to ensure an uninterrupted continuation of services. Other questions from my colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Passed. Next, we have Ordinance 2744, excuse me, uh, dash 2019, to amend the 2019 capital improvement budget to authorize the city auditor to transfer various funds within the construction management capital improvement fund and to authorize the finance and management director to expend $373,000 or so much thereof as may be necessary to reimburse the general fund for construction and building renovation expenses incurred by the Office of Construction Management, to authorize expenditures from various capital projects, to authorize the city auditor to transfer appropriation of $52,703 within the fleet operating fund, to authorize the city auditor to transfer and appropriate $604,000 uh, $1,200 from the general fund to the Jerry Hammond Center Operating Fund and to declare an emergency. The staffing costs for the Office of Construction Management are initially expensed to the general fund. However, the portion related to managing capital projects is eligible to be capitalized, which we are authorizing through this ordinance. The Office of Construction Management tracks the hours each employee works on individual projects and bills these hours to the associated capital project. This process correctly attributes staff time to capital projects rather than the general fund. This ordinance also properly aligns appropriations with ex projected expenditures within the finance director's office and the Jerry Hammond Center operating budgets in accordance with the third quarter financial review. 
emergency action is being considered to allow these divisions to continue operations without interruption. Are there questions from colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Pass. President Harden, I, that's all I have in finance. May I move to recreation and parks? Please. Uh, we have Ordinance 2545-2019 to authorize the Director of Finance and Management on behalf of Recreation and Parks to enter into contract with Callaway Golf for the purchase of merchandise for the airport golf course, to waive the competitive bidding provisions of the Columbus City Code, and to declare an emergency. Last year, the Golf Division assumed the op operation of the airport golf course's pro shop and are now responsible for purchasing the inventory and supplies. Competitive bidding provisions are being waived to secure the lowest price for these products for the pro shop through discounts on wholesale pricing directly from Callaway Golf. This provides a cost savings for the city. Additionally, the sale of these products provides revenue that goes towards the ongoing operations of the Recreation and Parks Department. Emergency actions being considered to secure off-season pricing. Any questions? Seeing none, I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Pass. And my final ordinance in recreation and parks is 2618-2019 to authorize the director of recreation and parks to enter into contract with Expert Engineering LLC for professional services associated with the creation of design standards and guidelines for the recreation and parks facilities to authorize the transfer of $78,758 within the Recreation and Parks Bond Fund, to authorize the amendment of the 2019 Capital Improvements Budget, to authorize the expenditure of $78,758 from the Recreation and Parks Voted Bond Fund, to waive the competitive uh, com procurement provisions of City Code Chapter 329 and to declare an emergency. The Rec and Parks Maintenance Division worked previously with expert engineering to develop design guidelines and standards to streamline maintenance work among the department's 136 facilities. By developing consistent standards and practices throughout all of its facilities, the department will create efficiencies and cost savings. To complete the work that has already been started, a bid waiver is required to continue working with expert engineering. Emergency action is being considered so that the Recreation and Parks Department can complete this work as soon as possible and incorporate savings into their 2020 capital improvement program. Seeing no questions, I move for passage. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Pass. That is all I have in my committees. Thank you, Chair. The next committee to come before council is the uh, Veterans of Affairs and Senior Services uh, Committee. Councilmember the chair, uh, Council Member Brown is the chair. Council Member, the floor is yours. Thank you, Council President. This evening I have one ordinance, Ordinance 2512-2019, to authorize and direct the Director of Recreation and Parks to enter contracts with 29 community agencies to provide social and nutritional services to older adults in the Central Ohio during 2020, to authorize the expenditure of $6,330,000 from the Recreation and Parks Grant Fund and to declare an emergency. The Central Ohio Area Agency on Aging CO AAA plans, funds, and delivers services to help older adults remain safe and independent in their homes. With the assistance of 29 area providers, CO AAA arranges and coordinates services to help individuals with daily living, such as homemaking, transportation, home delivered meals, and personal care. CO AAA offers education and resources to caregivers, professionals, and the public, and advocates for programs and policies that benefit adults over the age of 60. These federal funds provide services for 20,000 older adults in eight counties. Referrals are accepted from physicians, community agencies, family, friends, or individuals who can request services for themselves. If there are no questions, I move for passage. Please call the roll by voice. Ms. Brown? Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Dorans? Yes. Ms. Faber? Yes. Mr. Remy? Ms. Tyson? Yes. President Harden? Yes, ordinance passed. That's all I have this evening, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Next committee to come before council is the Neighborhoods Committee. That committee is chaired by Councilmember Dorrance. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Harden. Tonight I have ordinance number 2646 2019 to authorize an appropriation and expenditure with the Neighborhood Initiative Subfund in support of the My Brothers Cooper Grants Program and to authorize the Director of the Department of Neighborhoods to enter into grant agreements with various providers and to declare an emergency. Uh, President Arden, before I turn this over to you, I just want to thank you for the work you've done to, to establish My Brother's Keeper here in Columbus. Uh, you and I had the, the pleasure last week of uh, attending the NBK conference uh, 
with the Department of Neighborhoods that was attended by more than 200 uh, young men and, and parents. Uh, it was a great opportunity, I think a great uh, event for everyone that was involved. Uh, as many folks know, this uh, My Brother's Keeper is one of the uh, initiatives of former President Obama and certainly would not be as successful as it is here in our community without your leadership and advocacy. So with that, I'd like to throw it over to you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and thank you for the partnership. It, it really has been an honor to work with you over the last year uh, as we uh, essentially work to make sure there are opportunities and access for young, young men of color in, in the city of Columbus. And so uh, the purpose of uh, this legislation, the purpose of the MBK grants is to financially support programs in one of the four categories that the Kerwin Institute identified as contributing to youth vulnerability, that being economics, safety, education, and health. Many of the nonprofits, churches, and community leaders that have uh, led the char charge in our neighborhood for years are part of uh, the folks who, that have applied and have uh, worked uh, through the MBK grants program. The program will allow these organizations to grow their capacity and serve more boys and young men of color in Columbus. Director, uh, are there any other comments uh, you have? Uh... Thank you, President Hardin and Chair Dorans. Yes, um, we appreciate our partnership with City Council, um, again, to make the MBK grants available this year. Um, building on the foundation that we created last year with grants, we are pleased to make available a total of $75,000. Preference will be given to organizations whose programs are made up of at least 50% minority male participation in both public or charter schools and serve either the um, Hilltop and Linden areas. Um, the application is available online now at mbkvillage.org and there will be a grant overview session tomorrow um, at 3 p.m. October 29th at the Jerry Hammond Building located at 1111 East Broad Street in the Continental Room. And if people have um, questions or would like additional information, they can call the Department of Neighborhoods at 614-645-1993. Thank you. Thank you so much, Director, and thank you for your leadership. We're really excited to have Chris Sewell back who will be our MBK director and did an amazing job with your team on the uh, MBK summit uh, that Chair Dorrance was just speaking of. With that, I'll turn it back over to the chair. Yeah, uh, with that, uh, are there any other questions or comments from any of our other colleagues? Seeing none, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorrance, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Pass. Thank you, President Harden. That's all I have this evening. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the next committee to come before council is the Public Service and Transportation Committee. That committee is chaired by Council Member Favor. Council Member, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Harden. Tonight in Public Service and Transportation, we have Ordinance Number 2625-2019 to amend the 2019 Capital Improvement Budget to authorize the transfer of funds within the Streets and Highways Bond Fund to appropriate funds within the Transportation Grants Fund to authorize the Director of Public Service to enter into contract with Complete General Construction Company for the Downtown Signals Project to authorize the expenditure of up to $1,017,266.34 from the Streets and Highways Bond Fund and $1,446,557 from the Transportation Grants Fund for the Downtown Signals Project to repay any unused grant funds at the end of the grant period and to declare an emergency. This contract includes upgrading traffic signals in downtown Columbus at the intersections of Grant, Oak, Oak and Washington, Grant and State, Grant and Town, and Town and Washington. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I would move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Pass. Thank you. Next, we have ordinance number 2664-2019 to appropriate funds within the Street Construction Maintenance and Repair Fund to waive the competitive bidding requirements of Columbus City Code to authorize the Chief Innovation Officer to enter into contract with Fallgreen Mortine for professional services related to Smart Columbus website to authorize the expenditure of up to $75,000 from the Street Construction Maintenance and Repair Fund for this contract and to declare an emergency. This project will fund the creation of three websites within the Smart Columbus website that aim to raise awareness among residents about the following projects. Pivot, Linden Self-Driving self Shuttle, and Connected Vehicle Environment. 
Fall Green Mortine was compet competitively selected initially to create the Smart Columbus website, smart.columbus.gov, and will continue with this new contract for consistency and to leverage the work they've already completed. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing that, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Passed. Thank you. Next, we have ordinance number 2725-2019 to authorize the Director of Public Service to expend $2,550,000 or so much thereof as may be necessary to reimburse the Street Construction Maintenance and Repair Fund, Fund 2265, and to declare an emergency. This ordinance supports salaries, overhead, overtime, materials and other direct costs for personnel in the street construction and maintenance divisions. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing none, I would move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Passed. Thank you, President Harden. That's all I have in public service and transportation. May I move on to housing? Please. Thank you. We have ordinance 2630-2019 to authorize an appropriation to the Central Ohio Area Agency on Aging for continued support of the Housing Assistance Program to authorize an appropriation within the Neighborhoods Initiative Subfund and to authorize a cash transfer between the Neighborhood Initiative Subfund and the COAAA Grant Fund. This program supports preventative efforts to reduce eviction, displacement and homelessness amongst our senior population. We heard from CO AAA during our last meeting about the significance of this program and how necessary it is to continue and strengthen our efforts to help our senior population age in place. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Uh, seeing none, I would first move to amend to emergency by voice vote. Please call the roll by voice. Ms. Brown? Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Dorans? Yes. Ms. Faber? Yes. Mr. Remy? Yes. Ms. Tyson? Yes. President Harden? Yes, amended. And next I would move for passage as amended. Please call the roll by voice. Ms. Brown? Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Dorans? Yes. Ms. Faber? Yes. Mr. Remy? Yes. Ms. Tyson? Yes. President Harden? Yes, ordinance passed. Thank you, <laughs> President Harden, and just making sure if ben is, is Ben Horn here? I don't see him. Okay, we'll move forward. Uh, next we have ordinance number 2690-2019 to authorize Columbus City Council to enter into a grant agreement with the Legal Aid Society of Columbus in support of the eviction prevention program to authorize a transfer of funds within the general fund to authorize an expenditure in the Department of Development Housing Division and to declare an emergency. This ordinance represents part one of the eviction prevention program, which I am thrilled to bring to council today. As rents are going up in our community, wages are staying stagnant. That means more households are becoming unstable and having difficulty remaining in their homes. Every year, Franklin County files nearly 18,000 evictions. This is the highest number of evictions filed throughout the state of Ohio. And when we look closer at these numbers, we see that women, specifically African-American women, are more likely to be impacted by evictions here in Columbus. Evictions have long-term negative impacts on families. They cannot be removed from an individual's record and many times can lead to further instability, including homelessness. This is a major problem in our community and we must do everything we can to help establish security for our families. If our goal is to increase affordable housing in Columbus, we cannot ignore our eviction problem. I'm proud to partner with organizations like Legal Aid and Impact to combat this issue. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Yes, sir. Well, I just want to say, to say thank you, Chair, for your leadership, for the work that you've done, um, working with these community partners who've been in this space for a long time, but raising an issue that um, when you talk about 18,000 filed uh, uh, evictions, that shows that there's a structural problem uh, and not being afraid to dive into and ask the tough questions and then come up with a solution. Something I'm very grateful for in, in this council, I believe is grateful for your leadership and look forward to what comes next as well. Thank you. Yep. Do I have yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, certainly, I uh, appreciate your work in this, in this space and certainly um, the, the nonprofit organization that you're working with, I, I 
legal aid, but also I see impact is here, and you're going to speak to that in a few minutes. But most importantly, that this issue really does affect women of color. Mm -hmm. And who was in our, um, you know, when individuals get evicted, which is mostly women of color, they then go to the homeless shelter and ask who's in the shelter. And fundamentally, there's just an issue of lack. There's just lack of, I mean, you don't become homeless or get evicted when you have resources. I mean, there's, I mean yes, there are some other issues that, um, you know, I know you've been working on retaliatory evictions and things of that nature, but you don't, people who have money don't get evicted. It's, that's the issue that we're faced in this community. And certainly, um, you're working on this uh, issue at the level of dealing with women and adults. And of course, we're all in this, you know, supporting that with you. But, you know, structurally, when we're talking about this issue is, um, and that's one of the reasons why I created a commission on black girls. Because until we really deal with making sure that our girls are able to provide for themselves, and pr then this, this cycle just keeps going on and on and on. Mm -hmm. And um, so one, I'm glad we're all kind of, we're working on it in different ways, but we've gotta be very clear, it really is about a lack of money. And you know, jobs, I know we're all focused on that too, trying to make sure women, and you know, women have the jobs that they can make it, that pay a decent wage so that they can have, be able not to be evicted. So I appreciate what you're doing in terms of providing resources so that one situation does not put a person in eviction. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we all are in this together to try to help deal with this. But it is a significant issue, not only in Columbus, Ohio, but anywhere where you have a strong urban community, this is an issue across this country. And we've got to do our part to deal with this. So I thank you for your leadership on this. Thank you. All right, I would move for passage at this time. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Pass. Thank you. And um, to follow up, um, I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Bo Chilton and Ms. Letitia Chastening with impact to the podium. Um, we have ordinance number 2695-2019 to authorize Columbus City Council to enter into a grant agreement with Impact Community Action in support of the eviction prevention program to authorize an appropriation and an expenditure of up to $100,000 within the neighborhood initiative subfund and to declare an emergency. With part two of the eviction prevention program, we hope to stop potential evictions before they can even happen. Um, the floor is yours. Good evening, uh, President Hardin, President Pro Tem Brown, uh, Chair Favor, members of council. Thank you for your investment uh, in helping to prevent homelessness uh, and, and evictions. Uh, as Council Member Favor acknowledged, we have almost 18,000 evictions in Franklin County, one of the, well, the highest in Ohio, one of the highest in the nation per capita. And so this this fund will help to alleviate just a small portion. It's a start, um, but a very important start. Uh, you alluded to two thirds of uh, these eviction being African American women or, or other women of color. And what we also know is that um, these evictions, 40% uh, of them come from six zip codes in our, in our county. Um, one of the highest being uh, Linden. And so we want to have a very targeted strategy to understand what's going on in those neighborhood dynamics. Um, many of these are opportunity zones in which we are also, the city has invested in other initiatives. And so we want to make sure we connect those dots and address this in a whole last, holistic fashion. And so to talk a little bit about how many people will serve, um, I want to have Letitia describe the program. Uh, one other thing I'm very proud of, because of the other resources that we have in the comprehensive case management approach that we take, 100% of these funds will go directly to customers. Thank you, Mr. Chilton. Good evening, council members. Um, impact serves, well, the Impact Community Action serves over 22 to 25,000 people. Of that, 20, of that 20, 20, 25,000 people, over 20,000 come into emergency assistance. 
Um, and we deal with crisis of every level. Um, one of the hardest, I will tell you, is um, working with families for rent and mortgage assistance. You think you've heard all of the stories. Each day we get different stories and the situations are so unique in nature. And those are some of the hardest conversations that my staff um, deal with and, and work through families. Um, between about 60% of the families that come through our, our doors are single parent females as well. So we are experiencing that as well. Um, but what we are really excited about is being able to expand our rent and mortgage assistance to be able to serve um, about 100 additional families. And as um, Council Member Favor it, it indicated in the um, press conference, this is just a drop in the bucket. I'm really excited about what we can do to expand this body of work um, and how we can continue to um, grow this particular program to be able to address some of the issues. One of the um, unique things about the program as well is that we'll be, they'll, uh, the families will be required to work with um, a life coach for 90 days with the goal to focus on stable housing. Because one of the things that we have experienced is, is that families will come in for rent and mortgage assistance, but then the next week we'll see them for utility assistance. So being able to surround the family to focus on stable housing, then they'll be able to focus on finding a better job or being able to do better for their family. But if they're in crisis, we can't think about anything long term. So this is one of the unique things that we're doing with the rent and mortgage assistance, and I'm really looking forward to being able to share the success stories and how we can expand this further. Thank you. Are there any questions? Or yes, ma'am. Uh, this my more is a comment, not a question of um, gratitude to Council mm -hmm. Member Favor for your leadership. Um, and also gratitude to Impact, um, Letitia and Bo, Council Member Favors, vision on this couldn't be enacted without the strong infrastructure of your organization. Um, we realize how fortunate we are in Columbus that um, that, that is really what's, yeah. what's making all of this go forward. And the statistic you quoted that 100% of the funds are actually gonna go directly to people is incredible. Thank you for um, building and running an organization that allows this vision um, to, to come to life. And we look forward um, to, to supporting any ways we can to grow it. Um, I also will take a moment to thank you for um, joining us on Wednesday for the uh, financial empowerment work that I know is critical to the infrastructure of your organization. Thank you, Council Member Favor. So uh, we've acknowledged that there's a part one and there's a part two. Um, I want our residents in Columbus to know that uh, we all recognize that this is just a start. And so my vision uh, to address this issue is really um, going to take a multi-layered approach. And so I hope to come with a part three and a part four very shortly. Um, but really this is about bringing attention to a problem in our community that just not, does not get the attention that it deserves. Thank you so much for willing to be um, at the table to have this conversation with all of us. Thank you. And with that, I would move for a passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Favor, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Pass. Thank you. And then last, oh, I'm sorry. President Harden, may I move to criminal right. justice judiciary? Thank you. Uh, we have ordinance number 2449-2019 to authorize Columbus City Council to enter into a grant agreement with Healthcare Collaborative of Greater Columbus in support of Help Understanding Barriers or the hub diversion program in the city attorney's office to authorize an appropriation and an expenditure of up to $25,000 within the neighborhood initiative sub fund and to declare an emergency. Many people commit nonviolent crimes as a means of survival. Unfortunately, these individuals often spend months to years cycling through the criminal justice system before they are ready and able to make a change. The city attorney's office developed a diversion program to start identifying the root causes of crime and address those causes by connecting those accused to community services and treatment. The Healthcare Collaborative of Greater Columbus is the manager of the Central Ohio Pathways Hub. The Central Ohio's Pathways Hub is a centralized, neutral resource to connect individuals in need with necessary services. Community health workers from participating hub agencies facilitate the process by screening individuals for needs, providing pathways to resources, and storing the information in a secure database. 
I really want to take this opportunity to uh, applaud the efforts uh, and the vision uh, that comes from our city attorney, Zach Klein, um, and his effort to be proactive around the space of criminal justice reform. Um, I see Josh Cox is over there. If, are there any comments from um, you, city attorney? Excuse me, assistant city attorney. Uh, no, thank you. I think you expressed that program very well. Wonderful. Judge, any comments from you? Thank you, Council Member Faber, uh, Council President Harden, members of Council. Um, this is a continuum. The courts today are not the courts that you all may have known, especially the senior members on Council. It's growing up where there's crime and punishment. Uh, the courts today are working on ways to prevent future crimes by those who come engaged. Uh, Council, or, uh, City Attorney Klein is a partner in that, along with the other things that the court is doing to bring citizens back. So thank you very much for sponsoring this, and thank you for uh, uh, City Attorney Klein bringing this program forward to our courts. Thank you very much. Are there any questions or comments from my colleagues? Seeing that, I would move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Arden. Passed. Thank you, and that's all in my committees. Thank you, Madam Chair. The final committee to come before Council is the Health and Human Services Committee. The committee is chaired by Councilmember Tyson. Councilmember Flores is yours. Thank you, sir. I have ordinance number 2667-2019 to authorize the director of the Department of Development to enter into a contract with the Community Shelter Board for the Homeless Prevention Program for Pregnant Women to authorize an appropriation and an expenditure within the Neighborhood Initiative Subfund and to declare an emergency. Pregnant women experiencing homelessness are less likely to have adequate prenatal care and more likely to have a baby born premature and low birth weight. In a recent study, the, in a recent study the, the stress of homelessness was more strongly predictive of preterm birth and low birth weight than, than even smoking and substance abuse. Unfortunately, homelessness affects black women disproportionately in Columbus and elsewhere, further contributing to the high inf infant death rates experienced by black families. For pregnant women who already have children, another concern is the stress and negative effects that homelessness and shelter stays on in children. Homeless children are four times more likely to experience delayed development and two times as more likely to repeat a grade compared to a non-homeless child. They also attend an average of two different schools in a single year, affecting the continuity of their academic attainment. Housing is an effective health care intervention. 50% of school-age homeless children experience anxiety, depression, or withdrawal compared to 18% of non-homeless children. The Community Shelter Board will work directly with service providers to identify pregnant women who are in unstable housing situations that endangers them or the health of their baby. And this legislation, again, you just listen to what Council Member Favors just shared, Favor just shared, the importance of individuals not being homeless. It has so many effects on individuals in our community. The mom, the family, the children, it does affect them. So that, the legislation that was just passed is so important to this legislation and we want to make sure every child has an opportunity to be able not only to live to its first birthday, but certainly to be able to live a, a wonderful quality of life, to be able to live the lives of many of us in this, in this chambers is able to do. Um, so with that, I know Council Member Elizabeth Brown wants to make some comments also. Uh, thank you, Chair Tyson. Um, I, we are renewing this program. I have sponsored um, this legislation for a few years in a row now because of those critically important factors um, that Council Member Favor just laid out. And, you know, I want to stress that these aren't just facts and figures. This is reality every day. We must have the backs of our families and our kids in Columbus. Um, pregnant, we know that, that housing can be an intervention for pregnant women that ac absolutely makes the difference for a lifetime of health for their children. 
Um, that is one reason this is so important. This is the second year we've partnered with Community Shelter Board to administer the homelessness prevention program for pregnant women. And I look forward to continuing this vitally important work with our community partners. I'm very proud to sponsor this legislation today. I also want to highlight in addition that um, we've been working on a great project with the Shelter Board um, to celebrate these families. Uh, we have a group of local photographers um, that I worked with to get in-kind services. Actually, my wedding photographer um, and some of her friends, we secured their in-kind services and are, they're going to be taking um, portraits of mothers and their newborn babies um, for free. And we will be um, hosting that uh, in the next couple weeks. We're really excited about that opportunity. As a mother myself, um, I know that these moments are fleeting, and for women who are having to navigate such stressful life circumstances, we want to provide an extra opportunity for them to cherish really this treasured time um, and to see it for that beautiful relationship um, that they will hopefully look back on decades from now and still hold those photographs. We're very excited for this effort, and I just wanted to highlight, um, again, it's in-kind services, so I won't have to bring anything before you all um, <laughs> to, um, to make it happen, but I wanted to highlight as we pass this today that I'm excited for that opportunity. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. If there are no other questions or comments, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Passed. I think that's all I have in this committee this evening. Thank you, Madam Chair. Seeing no further business coming for council, may I have a motion to adjourn? Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Council is adjourned. Regular meeting number 53 will now come to order. Clerk, please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Thank you. Can I get a motion to dispense with the reading of the journal? Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. We will now go to the zoning committee. Councilmember Tyson chairs that committee and all members serve on it. Councilmember, the floor is yours. Thank you. Before beginning the zoning agenda, I'll briefly explain the rules of council as pertain to speaking before council on zonings and variances. We permit three speakers on each side, three proponents, three opponents, and we ask that they limit their remarks to three minutes on each side. And we provide an opportunity for rebuttal from the applicant. On the advice of the city attorney's office, we ask that anyone here this evening who wishes to speak either for or against any council variance, including staff, please stand, raise your right hand, and be sworn in. I wish to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. Please answer, I will. I will. Thank you. Uh, the first ordinance is 2200-2019 to rezone 6488 Hayden Run Road, being 2.86 acres located on the northeast side of Hayden Run Road, 555 feet south of Hayden Run Boulevard from R Rural District to CPD Commercial Plan Development District. The proposed applicant is HP Hayden Run Enterprises, LLC. The proposed use is a veterinary, veterinarian clinic or unspecified commercial development, and the city department's recommendation is approval, and Hayden Run Civic Association's recommendation is three to zero. I first move to waive second reading. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Thank you. And if there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, I will move for passage. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Thank you. The next ordinance is 2468-2019 to amend ordinance number 0884-2019, passed April the 15th of 2019 for property located at 2695 Holt Road by repealing section two and replacing it with the new the new section to correct the height district for the I institutional district. It's, this again is an ordinance amendment from I think, 35 feet to 60 feet. It replaces sections two pertaining to height. The city department's recommendation is approval and the Western Area Commission, Commission's recommendation is also approval. If there are no, I think there are no speakers, no comments, my colleagues, I will move to waive second reading. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. 
Thank you, and now I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Thank you. The next ordinance is 2551-2019 to grant a variance in the provisions of sections 3356.03 C4 permitted uses, 3367.15 CE M2 manufacturing district special provisions, and 3667.29 B storage of the Columbus City codes were properly located at 714 Steinmill Road to permit to permit a storage yard with reduced development standards in the C4 commercial district and the M2 manufacturing district. The applicant is Connie Klima, uh, attorney. The proposed use is a storage yard. The C department's recommendation is approval, and the Southwest Air Commission's recommendation is approval five to three. If there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, I move for passage. Well, first wave, second, move to wave second reading. I'm sorry. Thank you. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Hardin. Thank you. Now I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Hardin. Thank you. The next ordinance is 2582-2019 to grant a variance from the provisions of sections 3363.01 M Manufacturing District, 3312.25 Maneuvering, 3312.29 Parking Space, 33. 12.49 minimum numbers of parking spaces required and 3362.24 B D1 D1 building lines and the M manufacturing district of the Columbus City Codes were properly located at 825 South Front Street uh, to permit two detached single unit dwellings, a single unit dwelling and a carriage house on one lot with reduced development standards in the M Manufacturing District and to repeal ordinance number 2493-2016, which was passed October the 17th of 2016. The applicant is Alejandro Gonzalez. The proposed use is a single, two single unit dwellings on one lot. The C Department's recommendation is approval and the Brewery District Commission's recommendation is approval six to zero. If there are no questions or comments, I first move to waive second reading. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Hardin. Thank you, and now I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Hardin. Thank you. The next ordinance is 2591-2019 to rezone 4595 Heaton Road. <clears throat> being 2.17 acres located at the northwest corner of Heaton Road and Morris Road from ARO Apartment Office District to LC4 Limited Commercial District. The applicant is Caldwell Automotive. The proposed use is automotive sales, and the C Department's recommendation is approval. And the Northland Community Council's recommendation is, is approval 1401. If there are no questions from my colleagues, I first move to waive second reading. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Hardin. Thank you, and now I move for passage. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Hardin. Passed. Thank you. The next ordinance is 2589-2019 to grant a variance from the provisions of sections 3332.039 R4 residential district 3312.13A driveway 3312.25 maneuvering 3332.05A4 area district lot width requirements 3332.15R4 area district requirements I'm sorry 3332.19 fronting and 3332.27 rear yard of the Columbus City codes for the property located at 288 and 294 East 4th Avenue to permit two single unit dwellings on, on each of the two contiguous lots with reduced development standards in the R4 residential district. The applicant is Juliet Bullock, architect. The proposed use is two single unit dwellings on two contiguous lots. The C department's recommendation is approval and the Italian Village Commission's recommendation is approval five to zero. If there are no questions or comments, I first move to amend to emergency. <coughs> Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Hardin. Amended. Thank you, and now I move for passage. 
Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Passed. Thank you. The next ordinance is 2600-2019 to grant a variance in provisions of sections 3365.01 M1 Manufacturing District with a property located at 1096 North Cassidy Avenue to conform an existing single unit dwelling in the M1 Manufacturing District. The applicant is Roger Sheets. The proposed use is a single unit dwelling. The city department's recommendation is approval and the East Columbus Civic Association's recommendation is approval. If there are no questions or comments, I first move to amend to emergency. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. I'm thank uh, waved, sorry. Oh, thank you. And now I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Faber, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Pass. Thank you. The next ordinance is 2603-2019 to rezone 1012 Cleveland Avenue being 0.95 acres located at the northeast corner of Cleveland Ave Avenue and Gibbard Avenue from the R4 Residential District and the C4 Commercial District to CPD, Commercial Plan Development District. The applicant is, champ is the champion companies. The proposed use is a daycare or unspecified commercial development and parking lot. The city department's recommendation is approval. The Milo Grogan Area Commission's recommendation also is approval from nine to zero. If there are no questions or comments um, from my colleagues, I would first move to waive second reading. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Wait. Thank you. I now move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Doran's favor, Remy Tyson, President Harden. Pass. Thank you. And the final ordinance in zoning this evening is 2454-2019 to rezone 966 South Front Street, being 0.34 acres located on the east side of High Street, 65 feet north of Stewart Avenue from the C4 Commercial District to CPD Commercial Plan Development District. The applicant is the Jefferson Center for Learning and the Arts. The proposed use is a commercial development. The city department's recommendation is approval, and the Bury District Commission recommendation is approval six to zero. If there are no questions or comments from my colleagues, I move to waive second reading. Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Favor, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Waived. I move to amend as submitted to the clerk. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Favor, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Amend it. And lastly, I move for passage. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Favor, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Pass. That concludes zoning this evening. Seeing no further business coming before the zoning committee, may I get a motion for adjournment? Second. Please call the roll. Brown, Brown, Dorans, Favor, Remy, Tyson, President Harden. Adjourn. Have a great evening. <laughs>